first guest is here. He's the host of Real Time with Bill Maher, which you can catch Friday night on HBO. You will learn more from this than all those Sunday morning shows. I learned more stuff on this show, and it's funny. And he'll be performing at the Andrew Jackson Hall in Nashville on March 18th. And he has a stand-up comedy special, Crazy Stupid Politics, which will be streamed live on Yahoo February 23rd at 10.30 p.m. Please welcome Bill Maher! <laughs> See you, my friend. Are you sure you did enough headlines tonight, Jay? You think so? We did I, enough? I would, I would take another 20 or 30. <laughs> well, we really have covered every Come headline. Every that subject. Was stupid in America. That's this correct. Week. Is that all from one week? Huh? Is that all from one week? That's, that's all a, from one week. That is yes. amazing. What yeah. a big, what a country. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> now, you have a nice Valentine's Day yesterday? What did oh, you do? Oh, gosh, Jay. Does any man have a nice Valentine's no. Day? <laughs> Does any man really look forward to no, this? It's no. such a steeplechase, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's just, you know, it's a holiday, and also today is a holiday. Today is National Apologize to Your Girlfriend. <laughs> because it's so hard to, you know, it's so hard to, like, live up to the expectations. I mean, if you go on a date, who can live up to that scrutiny? It's like, yeah. you know, being stoned at dinner with your parents. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've all had... <laughs> oh, my God, Dad's a trout. <laughs> uh, and, and what gift could you get that lives up to yeah. the hype? You know, you have to get something that's pretty and romantic and distinctive and fairly expensive. And who but a gay man would know this when they saw it in a store? Right, right. Exactly. Exactly. So I, I, the, the funniest one, I, I saw an ad for something this year, uh, low-carb Valentine's chocolates. <laughs> Try giving that. <laughs> Honey, I have no imagination, and I think you're fat. Here right. you can. Right, yeah. but, <laughs> and the ones that, are, that were advertised on TV, there was a new wrinkle this year that I found so cynical, this idea, the, the one that you saw, the Super Bowl one. Oh, the Victoria's Secret. Was it Victoria's Secret? That was yeah, one yeah. of them, but I saw a number that, I mean, she said it very outright. She said, you know, Valentine's Day is simple, guys. Give and you shall receive. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, don't you find that a little cynical to put it that blatantly, like this exchange program of flowers for oral sex? Right, I, right. I, you, you know, you got it, very blatant got it. You give something to your wife and you'll get sex. Right. I mean, it's the same deal you could get out by the crackhead near the 7-Eleven, wow. but that's... I like the giant teddy bear. Like, it's now suddenly your girlfriend is four. Yeah, here you go. You get the, the giant nine-foot teddy bear. Yeah. Where do you put this piece of crap when the day is over? Okay? Yeah, yeah. There's no room in the apartment. Jay, I got that this yeah. year, yeah. so yeah. let's... No, that, 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 it's true. Well, let's talk politics. Now, Ironically, what, I got it. No. Now, what do you make? What do you make of Rick Santorum's surge? You must be oh, thrilled. Don't even say that word about Rick Santorum. It sounds dirty. <laughs> yeah. He's a Rick San a little conservative for me. Yeah, yeah. Thinks life begins at erection. This right. guy. I mean, <laughs> what? I mean, <laughs> you know, there are people like that who oh, think yeah, yeah. life begins the second the sperm hits the hoo ha. That you know. <laughs> And the hoo -ha. Before the man can even light a cigarette or yeah. get up and get a towel, there is a third person right. in that room. <laughs> before the woman can even say, what are you thinking? <laughs> there is a third person in that room. Or oh, the woman goes, that's it? Yeah, yeah they're that, mad. That's, yeah. yeah. But uh, I wonder what Rick Santorum got for Valentine's Day. That must have been something. When he plays hide the salami, they just actually hide a salami. Yeah. That's right. Uh, <laughs> But I, I, I think it's funny that, you know, th this election, remember, up until recently was going to be an election all about money, right, all jobs. about deficits yeah. and jobs and the deficit and they're spending too much. This is what the, the uh, Tea Party was so upset about, right? Yeah, Weren't sure. they mad at the bankers and the bailouts? Of course. And then, you know, somebody shoves a big gay penis in their face and they jump at it. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not what I meant to no. say. I meant to say that... Somehow these social issues, yeah. like, you know, Prop 8 here in California right. and birth control, and I mean, right. Rick Santorum is very, you know, certainly perceived as anti-gay, and I guess the Republicans haven't gotten the memo that this country has changed since 
like 2004. Sure. They put gay... <laughs> Now, in 2004, Bush won re-election because they put gay marriage voting against it right. on the ballot. Sure. Karl Rove did that in 11 key states, right. and every Byrne and Earl went in there to vote against gay marriage because that's what's screwing up my marriage. Yeah. Sure. Honey, how can I even think about having sex with you when there are gay people down the street having sex? Yeah. But, <laughs> but, but things have changed. It's not 2004. Americans have gotten a lot more comfortable with gay because of TV, because of Glee. Glee? Because of Glee and, and Will and Grace sure. and Frasier, all these gay shows. Right, right. <laughs> and, uh, and, I mean, what TV show doesn't have at least one gay character? So, I mean, America is at a different place, so... <laughs> I'm trying to... I'm, 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 I never thought about it till now. <laughs> oh, it's fine, guys. Guys, it's cool. It's cool. I said okay. one. Right, anyway, right, right, right. uh... Look, well, let's, let's, let's take a break. Right, wait, wait, take a break. We're just... We'll take a break. More with Bill Maher. Getting right to my this. point. Right yeah. Now, President Obama is in Los Angeles. He's in Los Angeles right now, actually. His approval rating is above 50%. The liber liberals, they suddenly like him again? What happened here? You know, I mean, I don't think we ever stopped liking him. I think, first of all, there's nothing that focuses the mind like this last year of seeing the Republicans. <laughs> you see, these people, you run back to his arms pretty quickly. <laughs> Also, I think, you know, he's just gotten better. I mean, you know, I think he really knows how to negotiate a lot better yeah. than he used to. And he just got his mojo back. I mean, look, he's half black, he's half white. I think the first term was the white term. Right. <laughs> and now we're gonna get the black term. And uh, that's the one I'm looking forward to. Now, why uh, doesn't... But, go ahead. Yeah, gonna, I'm gonna say, why doesn't the GOP, like Mitt, Mitt Romney seems to be the guy if, if I was Obama, the guy I'd be worried about is Mitt Romney, because he seems sort of moderate, even though he's, he's suddenly a severe conservative. Severe. But, I mean, moderate, conservative moderate is where the country usually is. And, yeah. and overall, people are fairly moderate. And he seems like the one, and yet, they're beating him for him. Well, you can see that this is the, the dilemma he's in with fighting Rick Santorum, is that he, he really should be saying, if he wants to beat Rick Santorum, he should be saying to the Republican voters, this guy is poisoned in the general election because he's too conservative. Right. But you can't say the words too conservative to Republicans anymore. Right. There's right. no such thing. I mean, Rick Perry talked about secession. Right. Remember that? Right. Yeah. Herman Cain talked about electrocuting Mexicans. Yeah. Where do you go to get to the right? Slavery? Yeah. Is, right. It, is that what Rick Perry meant when he said, I want to put people back to work? Yeah. I yeah. mean... <laughs> you, you just can't... Yeah. Get to the right. I mean, yeah. Mitt, Mitt Romney thinks people don't like him because he has a lot of money. That's not why people don't like him. They don't like him because he has no conscience. Yeah. That's why they don't like Mitt Romney. We don't, we don't hate people for having money, although it would be nice for Mitt Romney's sake if he would be a little more understanding about how we feel about vulture capitalists. Yeah. You know, he thinks he didn't do anything wrong with his company. Remember Bain Capital? Sure. Which, you know, they would find a weak company take it over, fire everybody, sell it off for parts, and he's like, what? We found a wounded animal and we ate it. Yeah. That's capitalism, yeah. that's good. Yeah. What, what yeah. Mitt Romney needs to do is go on that Undercover Boss show. <coughs> yeah, yeah. You know that show, Undercover yeah, Boss? Sure, yeah, yeah. I know it's your favorite show, isn't it? Well, you know, <laughs> first of all, if a 55-year-old guy in a fake beard and a camera crew comes by your workplace, you're on Undercover Boss, right. okay? I, I, right, right. I think that's... Right, right. But, I mean, <laughs> that show, to me, says it all about the Mitt Romney situation yeah. because here's, here's this idea that, you know, uh, this guy anecdotally solves the income inequality problem. I mean, you know that the 400 richest Americans have the same amount of money as the bottom 150 million Americans. Yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? Okay, so the, the boss comes by, he finds out that, you know, making $185 a week in America really sucks. Right. So he showers money on the workers, 
you know, it's like pretty woman if you're the whore. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I know it's just a TV show, but it really bothers me because it furthers this idea that somehow rich people, they're just like us, and they would really like us if they could just walk for a mile in our cheap plastic shoes. Right. <laughs> Except they're the reason the shoe factory has moved to China. Right. Right. And we have this idea that, you know, if we're just nice to rich people, we really have the same interests, and, you know, they'll get so full that candy will rain down upon all of us. Right. Like some sort of pinata of benevolence, except here's the thing about pinatas. <laughs> they don't just give it up, you have to hit them with a stick. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what Mitt Romney needs to learn. <laughs> now he was, uh, he was against the auto bailout, which I thought he was wrong to do, because that has turned out to be something that, were you against it? I can't remember. No, of no, course not. I was for it, I thought it was fantastic. Absolutely, I mean, first of all, it worked. Right. You know, how about just giving a guy points for what works? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I mean, yeah. <clears throat> Joe, <clears throat> Joe Biden keeps saying, you know, Obama should run just on the, on the slogan, Osama bin Laden is dead and GM is alive. Right. You know? Right, right. Yeah. They, they, they don't seem to be able to give him credit for anything. No yeah. matter what he does, the, the prime directive is to come out against him. Yeah. You know, we're, we're doing this editorial on the show Friday night about the idea that no president, and I don't think, I mean, you could get a historian on here, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think any president has faced the kind of disrespect that this president has. All presidents get a, a lot of disrespect, but never to their face, never in the same room. That is what is so different. Remember Bill O'Reilly in that interview interrupted him like 48 times? You don't see that with other presidents, interrupting a president. What about the guy who shout out, you lie, yeah, we'll heckling a yeah, president? Right. Jan Brewer, the, the governor of, the with the finger in the face? Right, right, yeah. You know, said she felt threatened by him, threatened? Oh, clutch your purse, honey. Yeah. <laughs> Threatened? Yeah. You know, like, like he put his hand down her blouse and said, hey, you my white princess. <laughs> this kind of up close and personal disrespect we yeah. never had of another yeah. president. I'm yeah. not saying why. We'll leave that up to yeah. others, you know. All right. Well, anyway, you're, I want to talk about your stand-up special. It's yes. February 23rd. You're doing it live. Yes, this is so new, Jay. I, you know what? I, live in you. This, 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 this is groundbreaking. No one's ever really done this. Okay. But, you know, you and I, we don't want to be dinosaurs. <laughs> we want to move to right. the new media. Right. I'm do, I said, you know, I'm, I have a great stand-up special I'm ready to do. I want to do it live on Yahoo. You're on Yahoo, right? Everybody right, goes to go. Yahoo. Yeah, so. 7.30 Pacific. Yes, Thursday, February 23rd, and I have a big announcement I'm going to make at the end of a it. A big announcement? I'm not going to say what it is, Ooh. but it's going to be All giant. Right. It'll we'll blow check it out. Bill, mind. thank you, my friend. All right, Jay. All right, be right back with Ali Wentworth.